these lessons are ones that um, we quite often, we, they get mixed up because of the way our calendar works. The lessons at the beginning of the season after Pentecost often get swallowed up by when Easter falls. And the earlier Easter is, the more of those lessons we get. And so when Easter is late, we don't get them at all. So this reading is one that we sometimes miss. Last week's reading, which is referred to at the beginning of the gospel about the healing of the centurion's beloved servant, um, that we almost never get to read on Sunday mornings because if it's not taken up by um, the fact that Easter was earlier, it gets covered up by Trinity Sunday like it did last week. So we missed out on it. But that particular reading has Jesus in Capernaum and the people of the town are concerned because one of their um, uh, one of the people who lives there, who's a centurion, has a beloved servant who is very sick and they want Jesus to go and do something for him. Now, one of the reasons that this is important is because this is not just, um, you know, we're used to military things around here. We've got 29 palms. So the idea of soldiers being around is a part of our lifeblood. But this was an occupying officer from the hated Romans. And this person had so impressed the community that they went out of their way to see if they could get Jesus to help him. And indeed, Jesus and the centurion have a conversation and the servant is healed. Jesus has finished up his Sermon on the Plain, which is the equivalent of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew. And he and his disciples are traveling around, and Jesus is in many ways just demonstrating the things that he talked about in his, the things that he taught them when he was preaching to them. And now they've come from Capernaum, about 25 miles to Nain, and Jesus with his crowd of disciples, you should probably not think 12, but maybe at least 30 people following Jesus at this time, maybe even 50 or more. And as they're going, Jesus is in a sense demonstrating all the things he's preached about. And as they walk into this town, Jesus sees a funeral procession. He sees that there is a woman I don't know how he knows this, but it's a widow whose only son has died. And Jesus looks at her or sees her and has compassion. Now, Jesus having compassion in English doesn't even come near what the word really says. I, I try not to do a lot of stuff where I bring you the Greek because it's but I'm thinking of this as more of an object lesson than a Greek lesson. The word in Greek is splachnizomai. Can you say that? Splachnizomai. Splachnizomai. What it really means is he felt in his guts something. Now, doesn't splachnizomai say a lot more about that? Have you ever had something happen that turned your stomach over? That was so, um, that caught you so short that you just did a flip flop right there. That's what this says happened to Jesus. It's important to me because so often we have visions of Jesus that look like those um, all white paintings of Jesus that he just floats above everything and never is touched by anything until you get to the cross, of course, and then that's all over. But I mean, this particular phrase, this experience, gives us a very different window of Jesus. Jesus walked into this town and no one addressed him, but he saw the procession. He saw the woman and he knew what all of this meant to her. Now, I know a little bit about this. My father's mother outlived all three of her children. Um, my father was the youngest of the kids. 
And she outlived him by two or three years. And it was very devastating to her to have all of her children die before. But she had social security. She had at least one pension from one or more of her husbands. And she had in-laws, I mean, uh, the, the, the spouses of her children who were still alive. So she was, though devastated, really not on the verge of anything very horrible. In the culture where Jesus was, that wasn't the way things were for widows. Widows without any family, widows without any male to protect them. And so when Jesus looks at this woman and his heart skips a beat, his stomach turns over, he looks at her with the eyes of compassion. And he resolves, no one asks him, to do something about it. 